Glide recently released their Glide Tables API, which allows you to create, update, and delete rows from a Glide table from outside of Glide through an API. If you're familiar with Glide and you use Glide, this is a big game changer because the main reason we haven't been using Glide Tables is because we can't access or update the data from outside of the Glide interface. And that makes integrating with other systems difficult. But now that there's a Glide Tables API, integration is made easy. In this video, I'm gonna show you exactly how to get started with the Glide Glide Tables API. Let's take a look at what we're gonna create in this video. So uh, this table is called leads. And so I wanna track leads that come into this kind of workflow inside of ClickUp. So if I call, or if I add a new lead, Darren test at test co, that would be the lead. So if I save that, meaning I'm creating that lead inside of ClickUp, what I want to happen is over here, that lead is created inside of the Glide table. And there you can see right there that it just showed up. The next thing we might wanna do is update it. Save that. And then I wanna update this record whenever we move this lead to qualified. So if I move that there, what's gonna happen is it's gonna update the name, context, and mark it as qualified. Now, this app that I'm creating inside of Glide is only for like active leads. And so I actually wanna remove any lead that's been marked as unqualified. So let me go ahead and add a new lead. So we'll just say new lead, and we'll wait on that to come into the Glide table. There it is. And then let's say I met with this lead and then it work out. So I moved them to as an unqualified lead. And so this will actually delete this row. There it is. Pretty cool, right? Or is it daunting? If you're not comfortable with APIs and they scare you a little bit, just watch this video. And I promise it is not as daunting as it seems. And if you wait around to the end of the video, I'm gonna share with you my free APIs Made Simpler guide. It's everything I know about JSON and APIs all compiled into an ebook that you can have for free. Let's get started. So it does take a little bit of time because there are two delay points here. First off, with the Glide API, you're actually submitting a request to Glide for them to then process. So it goes into a sort of queue that needs to be processed by Glide's internal engine. In addition to that, we're actually using Zapier to trigger these API calls whenever things happen inside of ClickUp. And Zapier also has the, this kind of queue and then process type system system. So there is a little bit of delay in the scenario that we are running. So I'm going to go ahead and now dive into actually setting up these API calls inside of Zapier and syncing everything up. The first thing we have here is add a glide row when a new lead is added. So this is whenever we create a new lead then creates a row right here. So I'm not going to go through all the different pieces of the Zap because this is focused on the Glide API. So what we have here is this Zap is triggered whenever a new task is created or when a new lead is created in ClickUp. Whenever that happens, we want to add a row here. Let's look at the Add Row API. So we go to Show API Usage, and we can copy this Add Row text blob here. And let's just pull it into here. All right, so we have this. Let's go ahead and open up this right here and uh, dive deeper into it. Zapier processes APIs through their service called Webhooks by Zapier. And I like to use their custom request action. So then it's just a matter of filling in all these forms. So the, the type of request we are creating is a post and we can see that right here. It says request post. And this just means that we are creating a request for Glide to do something to our data. That's what posting means, it's creating something. The next field is the URL. And so then we look at this right here. It says request post, and then it has a URL. So we're posting something to this URL. So I'm just gonna copy that URL and paste it in here. And then data pass through, we can skip that. Then we get into the actual data that we're sending along with this request. And so we can see here, we have a header, we have header, and then we have data. Oh, data, that's what we need. So then we see, okay, the data that we're passing through is this JSON object here. So we can copy this let's just paste that into here. And then we want to dynamically populate some of this data. So this request here gives us all of the fields that are within our, our Glide table here, but we actually want to edit. We don't want to pass in name. We want to pass in the actual leads name. So to do that, we can just exit out of there. And then here, the leads name is the task name. So I can see that right there, just click on that. The category or context, that's this third field here. 
I can pass in the description for that. I actually don't want to pass in qualified, so we're just going to leave that as blank for now because we don't know if this lead has been qualified or not. And then the last thing we need to replace is the ClickUp ID. So I can search for ID, and that's that. So those are the only three things that we need to dynamically send to Glide through this API call. Everything else is gonna stay the same every time this API call is hit. So now what have we done? So we defined the type of request we wanna create. We defined the destination of that request. We've defined the data that's gonna be sent to that destination. And then the last thing we need to do is define the headers. So if we pull up the Glide curl statement here, we can see there are two headers that need to be passed along. So the first is the content type. You can see that here, content type, application JSON. That tells the API what format the uh, data that you're sending through is in. This is in what is called JSON format or JavaScript object notation. And then the second header is the authorization or the authentication token. So this basically permits you to update this table. Without this, Glide would reject it and say you're not authorized. This makes it so that other people that are not a part of your team cannot update your table because they don't have access to it. So we have to add in this to actually be able to update the data. Basically, you're just copying over what Glide gives you into the parameters that are defined inside of Zapier or whatever API tool that you're using. Then basically it, it all works. You're just passing in that data. The last thing I'm doing with this zap is basically a workaround. I needed a way to store the glide ID or the row ID that gets returned whenever you create a row and map that to the ClickUp task ID. Unfortunately, ClickUp does not have a action where I can update a custom field inside of a task. So I had to store this a little hacky way inside of Google Sheets. But anyways, whenever we actually add a row, Glide sends back the row ID. And so that's what I'm doing down here. I'm creating a new row in this Google Sheet and storing the row ID that was added in Glide and mapping that to the ClickUp ID so that we know that this task in ClickUp is mapped to this row inside of Glide. Now we can turn that on and create a new task or a new lead, new leader here. And there we go. Now we have that new lead in there. All right, so the second thing that I showed you was actually updating a Glide row. So if we look at the API usage, we have this thing called set columns. This allows us to update an existing record. So let's go ahead and copy that and look at the differences in this API call. So you can see here, we're still doing a post. We're still hitting that same uh, mutate tables URL. We're still passing in the same header and authorization token. But the thing that has changed is the JSON object just a little bit. We still have the app ID. We still have the table name that we're updating. We still have column values, but now we have a different action. It's called set columns in row instead of add row to table. And then we're also defining a row ID. We have to define this row ID so that Glide knows which row we want to update. If we're updating data, we need to know which actual row we want to update. So inside of the Zapier task, we're triggering this whenever something is moved to this qualified status. Whenever that happens, we're looking up the row ID based off the ClickUp ID. Whenever something is moved to qualified, we have the ClickUp ID, and then we're gonna look up the Glide row ID from Google Sheets. That's what this does. And then we send another custom request or custom API call. So we're posting a request to the Glide API. We're hitting the same destination URL. We're still passing in JSON and it's still us sending this request. So we're authorized to do that. And then here, all this has stayed the same, but now in column values, I'm no longer passing in the ClickUp ID because that's gonna stay the same. We don't need to update that. The name may have changed. I may have changed that inside of ClickUp. The category or the context may have changed. So I'm gonna update that. And then I'm just setting qualified to true because this is a Boolean value. And because this zap only gets triggered whenever I move something to qualified, I can just set this as qualified because it's only gonna run when a lead is qualified. One more thing is you may notice that this name is called category, whereas over here it's called context. The name of this field is determined whenever you create the column. So if you change the name of the column after you have created it, it's not gonna be reflected in your JSON. The JSON 
that you're sending through is always going to require that initial name that you created the field with. Close that. This is still on. And so now, same thing. So whenever we move this over to qualified, we should see this row now be qualified. There you go. Now that's updated. And the last API call that I wanted to show you was deleting a row. So this is very similar. Let's go ahead and copy that uh, curl statement and we can look at this as well. All right, so you can see here we are posting something. So same thing, posting to this URL. We're still sending JSON, we're still authorized, but the actual JSON that we're sending through has changed. We're still hitting this app ID, we're still hitting this table, but now instead of passing in a, a little JSON of the actual data we want to send, we don't need to do that because we're deleting a row. This is the row ID that we want to delete. So the only dynamic thing we need to pass in this case is the row ID that we want to delete. So if I go back, we can look at that zap as well. This one looks very similar to the update. And this one is triggered whenever a row is moved to unqualified. When it's moved there, we look up the row ID for the glide, glide table row. And then our custom action should look, look very familiar. We're posting to this destination. We're sending this JSON and then we're authorized. And then all we're doing is passing in to this app. We want to delete a row in this table. And this is the row ID of the row we want to delete. And we just grab that from this lookup that we just looked up. And then we can send that along. And that makes it so that now if I were to move this one over to unqualified, it will delete this row right here. All right, there you go. So that is how you're able to add, update, and delete rows inside of a glide table using the glide table API. So as promised, I wanted to give you access to my free APIs made simpler guide. All you need to do to get access to that is follow the link in the description and tell me where to send it. APIs are essential to this new era of no code and low code apps. So if you aren't comfortable with JSON or APIs, I would highly encourage you to check out that free guide. And integrating with the Glide Tables API is not necessarily the only way that you can access external data from within a Glide application. And it might not be the best solution for your use case. In this video right here, I'll show you how to use the Fetch JSON plugin. This allows you to dynamically access data from outside of Glide. I create my own custom dictionary app. You enter in a word and it displays definitions. And this uses a dictionary API. So if you want to continue your API education, definitely check out that video. And thanks for watching this one. Happy coding.